I was very excited when the Yishin trash can finally arrived, not only because it was winter in the northern hemisphere, and micro drone flying was happening more often. You see, there was a lot of hype about the trash can, and rightfully so. Overall, in the micro drone uh, world, interesting things have been happening over the past year. I bought a Snapper 7 first in August 2018, and that was an awesome little fella. But more importantly, it started a race. A few months later, the Mobula 7 came out and it was immediately crowned the best. Um, moreover, it could also support two S batteries and that was a game changer at the time. Then a few months later, the trash can came out and knocked it out of the park. This is a micro quad that you could snatch up for as little as $95 and you could get an amazing experience in a drone with crazy performance. But what makes it so good? Let's take a look. The trash can arrives in a nice protective hard shell, um, pretty neat, useful to keep the quad safe and to transport it around alongside its batteries. The case inside has a soft foam with a slot for the drone, some space for the batteries, small charger and a bag with tools and spare parts. As you can tell, the quad comes with a small USB charger that can charge one battery at a time. Uh, if you still haven't, definitely consider grabbing a parallel charging port in order to simultaneously charge multiple batteries at the same time, as well as to charge your smaller batteries off of a bigger battery, for example a 4S, on the go. The trash can comes with four batteries, which is plenty to get you started, but you might find yourself outgrowing them soon and needing more, in which case definitely grab yourself some more. You also get a bunch of spare parts and tools, in the bag you will find a prop uh, prying tool, four spare props, a Phillips head screwdriver, x head tool, a small plug to enable you to fly 1S, and an XT30 connector in case you decide to make the switch to full time 2S batteries. Pretty cool. I'm not going to go in depth in terms of components, but there is a couple of things definitely uh, worth mentioning. First and foremost, that's the camera. It's a CADX camera. Pretty high quality and the image is great too. Um, it's really nice that Yashin had decided to use a good camera for the trash can and it shows. The VDX goes all the way up to 200 milliwatts, which makes for decent range and penetration if you're legally allowed to run it at that power. The flight controller is an F4 with two UARTs. Pretty nice. Another small but very appreciated feature is the canopy. It allows you to adjust the camera angle. Very, very handy. As far as beta flight configuration goes, I didn't have to make too many changes. Because of personal preference, I switched off motor stop to enable motor spinning when the quad is on, regardless of the throttle value. I like it that way as it always indicates clearly uh, when the drone is armed. Additionally, on the configuration tab, you have to pay attention to the receiver settings. Just follow the instructions you got with the quad and you'll be fine. Um, in my example, I'm using the FR Sky receiver with the US firmware. On the pit tuning tab, um, I didn't touch any of the defaults. I pretty much let it be as it was. And in the modes tab, the present configuration was just fine. I only tweaked the positions of the switches to my liking, making sure that I had two modes available to me, acro and angle mode. Binding the trash can is fairly straightforward, matter of fact pretty easy. There is no need to hold the bind button while powering up the quad, just plug the battery in and press the bind button to put the receiver in bind mode. This is explained nicely in the instructions that came with the drone. Then in your radio, create a new model and go to your binding function. In my example, I'm using the Tyrannis QX7 to do the binding. It's important to know that if you bought the drone with the US receiver or FCC, um, your Tyrannis internal module might need to be flashed with the FCC firmware, or if you went for the EU, the LBT version, then again, your radio might need to be flashed accordingly. Uh, you can check the links in the description for blog posts on how to solve these situations. Finally, we come to the fun part, flying. Uh, initially, I tried flying on 1S, and when I first took off, without any throttle limits, indoors, 
I was surprised in how timid the little craft was. Comparing it to the Snapper 7, which was pretty unflyable in my relatively small home, uh, the Ishin trash can behaved really nice. It was snappy and easy to control, however even on just one S, it packed a punch. Overall, I'm happy with the performance out of the box on one S. The best thing about it is that the trash can comes with this small plug that makes it very easy to fly one S. Just plug in the small bit onto one of the battery connectors, plug in your battery on the other connector and you're set. The story is quite different on 2S. Here we get a lot of extra power uh, and it might be a bit challenging to navigate indoors if your premises are smaller, like in my case. What still did surprise me was that it was still manageable. I was still able to fly even 2S indoors. Kudos, good job Yashin, I think the handling on a trash can is great and it would be an awesome quad even for beginners to learn on. Additionally, the best part about flying 2S indoors is that you get much longer flight times and much fewer voltage sags if any at all. If you prefer this, go for it. Lastly, I'd like to mention throttle limits. If you feel like you need to turn down the power just a bit in favor of increasing handling, you can easily do that in beta flight. Uh, first go to the pit tab and set throttle mid to 0.30 and throttle expo to 0.70. Finally go to the CLI tab and paste in the command set space throttle limit percent equals 70. Try flying now. 1S or 2S up to you. I find that there is not much need for throttle limiting with 1S but your experience may vary. You can go back to the settings in beta flight and tweak them to your liking until you're happy with the response from the craft. When it comes to flying outdoors, the trash can performs just as well. If you have applied any throttle limiting to the craft, remember to take it off before flying outdoors to use the full potential of the trash can. In conclusion, if you're in the market for a micro drone or if you're a beginner that wants to buy something that can scale with your skill as you get better, I can recommend the trash can. It comes at a very decent price with high quality components, a decent tune and flies really nicely indoors, outdoors, on 1S or on 2S. If you want to fly in city parks or more populated areas but don't want to be a menace to society, get the trash can. You still need to be careful but you probably cannot do any damage to anyone with this micro drone compared to a full-fledged 5-inch quad. Overall, it comes at a great price, it takes all the checkboxes and gets you some extra performance. It flies really well and it's easy to handle and get used to. So if you have any other use cases outlined above, I definitely recommend the Asian trash can as your first or maybe next micro drone. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.